All right, um, here is the last video of the first part, I guess, of our whole nomenclature uh, stuff, which is writing formulas, and so we're ready to talk about polyatomic compounds. And so if we're getting ready to write polyatomic compounds, we are ready to talk about, in general, what are um, polyatomic ions. And polyatomic ions are ions that contain more than one atom. They basically make ionic bonds, which um, we'll talk about more later. Basically, they have charges. So this is a good indicator. Now, you're going to have charts, and some of you have seen that we passed out um, polyatomic ion charts. You'll see, um, and you know, we'll talk about it a little bit in class. Okay, so you'll see these polyatomic ions, so they all have charges. And so, if they have charges, this is going to lead us into, when we get ready to write formulas, this is going to lead us into that they're going to be types 1s or 2s. Because type 3s don't have charges. They're prefixes, they don't exist as charges, so that's something that we need to focus on. Oops, sorry. So, they're held together by covalent bonds, and again, you'll understand the bonding stuff a little bit more when we um, talk about it, but just things that you should know already is that polyatomic compounds are, um, they're, they make ionic bonds, but they're held together by covalent bonds, and for the most part, they are negatively charged. There is only one polyatomic that we are going to deal with that is a positive charge, okay? So, um, yeah. there you go. And so the one I've even put on here, NH4, which is called ammonium. Okay. So, polyatomic compounds. They are made from a metal. So they're going to start with a metal. So again, this is why I said indicator. Hello. Um, so the indicator is that they are types ones or twos because remember a type one or two starts with a metal or non-metal which means that you're going to and I guess I have that right there um, if I would read um, so they're going to have charges you're going to find the charges you're going to reduce the charges then you're going to cross the charges so they're exactly like type ones or twos it's just we have to add one more thing to them okay. alright so let's look at some examples okay so again, you're going to have to have your polyatomic ion chart available in order to ensure to do this, because if not, it's going to be a little difficult, because some of these you don't know. Now, a good indicator, um, just to start teaching you this early, you know, it's better to learn early, a good indicator that you even have a polyatomic ion is the ending. Everything that we've learned so far has ended in I-D-E, but um, polyatomics will end in eight or ite. There are only two exceptions to that. If you look on your polyatomic ion chart, the only exceptions to that rule are hydroxide and cyanide. So if you want to like write that down somewhere, so that way like um, when we get our little cheat sheets for the test and you want to put like polyatomics always in an 8 or I or even you know of course you know like right now when you're doing a worksheet hey I know it's a polyatomic because it ends in 8 or I and except for these two you know that's something good to you know just kind of keep in in check so again this is going to start with a metal so sodium is a metal has a charge we know it makes a 1 plus charge you're going to have to go and you're going to have to look up the second element most of the time. There's only one exception to that, and that's ammonium. You're going to have to look up that second word on your polyatomic ion chart. So, for example, nitrate is NO3 with a 1 minus charge. So, now... You're going to, since both these are ones, and we'll talk about what happens if they're not both ones here in a minute, 
You're going to cross it down. You're going to cross it down. So the answer to this one is NA1. We don't write the 1. NO3, 1. So that is the formula for sodium nitrate. Seems very, very familiar, right? Now, this is the real reason, too, that I like to reduce before you cross because you're going to get yourself in trouble because you can't, first of all, one of the main rules is that you can't touch the, the number on the polyatomic. So, like, um, if I, this three here is untouchable. You are never allowed to move that three. Don't touch it, don't move it, don't, nothing. There will always be a three in the formula. Okay, so that's why I like to reduce before you cross, so that way you're not tempted that, like, if you had threes as the prefix, as the uh, charges, that you're not, oh, well, I have all threes, I can cancel. No, you're not allowed to touch that three. And again, I'll kind of probably show you an example of that, too. All right, let's try the next one. The example is a type 2 polyatomic, because, look, copper 2, okay, so a metal, but this is an example of where you wouldn't know the charge. So you have Cu with a 2 plus charge, because the Roman numeral, of course, gives you the charge. Then you have carbonate, okay, CO3, with a, again, 2 minus charge. You know it's a polyatomic because it ends in 8, so you look it up, carbonate on your chart is CO3 with a 2 minus charge. So here's an example of where we want to reduce, though. 1, 1, so again, they're 1s. So we just take those ones again and cross them down. So this is an example of CuCO3. Now, before you like shut me off and say, hey, I've got this, this mastered, this is easy. There is one more thing that we have to put on there. So don't just, you know, again, don't just shut me off and say I'm done and no more examples for me. Okay? So let's look at the next slide here. Now, there's a couple more things I want to point out. One, what happens if your polyatomic's in the front? Here's the example of a polyatomic in the front. In fact, here's an example where they give you a polyatomic in the front and in the back. Okay? So they give you the example of ammonium, which is NH4 with a 1 plus charge. And you have cyanide, which is CN with a 1 minus charge. Well, you treat this just like you would anything else. You have 1 cross it down, 1 cross it down. And so your final formula is just NH4, CN. Done and done. Okay, now here's another thing I wanted to show you because here's a great example of why I said don't shut me off. Because they're not always, notice every single one that I've done so far has a charge of 1. They're not always going to be charges of 1. Look at this one, lead 4. So PB with a 4 plus charge. Then you have nitrate, which is NO3, with a 1 minus charge. Now, here's what you have to do. This 1 is fine. Take that down and cross it. But look, you have a 4 here. You're going to take that down and cross it. Well, we don't write PB1 NO3 and then put the 4 right next to the 3. That's bad. If you're crossing down a number other than 1, so if this number here that you're crossing down to a polyatomic, only to a polyatomic, if you're crossing down a number to a polyatomic that is a number other than 1, meaning that's 2, 3, 4, whatever, you need to put parentheses around your polyatomic so that your final answer that 4 in this case applies to everything in the polyatomic. So here is the correct final answer for lead 4 nitrate. It's kind of like with math that let's say like you want to take and take 2 and you want to apply it to x minus 3. If I want to make sure that that 2 is getting multiplied to both the x and the minus 3, I have to put the x minus 3 in parentheses. Because if I don't, the 2 only gets applied to the x. So that's what you have to be careful of. Make sure that you put parentheses around it. So you don't have to put parentheses around just a single element. That's why we haven't used parentheses at this point. You only use parentheses around polyatomics. So 
you only use parentheses around polys. Okay, so just make sure you make note of that. Okay, I think that's the end of my examples, but let me just double check here. Yep. All right, that's it.